Right, just wait for some people to just come in and then I'll get started. On the mad stuff, Mark. Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'll get some people in here in a second. Right, people starting to come in. Hi, everyone. Right, Lee Ashby here for Motocross and Speedway Memories. Uh, I've got a cracking evening, uh, cracking interview for you this evening. Before I do that, I'll just get my thank yous in. Uh, big thanks for the support to Simon Pardo of White Eagle Finance. They give quality financial advice for pensions, mortgages, investments and protection. Check the website at www.whiteeaglefinance.co.uk. Big thanks to Stefan Everts with his S72 uh, gin and vodka brand. Check all his amazing products at www.s72gin.com. And also, big thanks to Tom Brown of Moto Extreme and Moto Part 46. Check them out for all your off-road needs, including the new 2021 Kawasaki's at www.motoextreme.co.uk. And you can phone them on 01225 seven. Plus, speak to him on places if you want to get into the practice at the Moto Part 46. Right then, people. I'm going to get a little countdown going here, and then we're going to bring in the main man. Here we go. Right, people. He was known as Loramski, world champion in 2000, three times British champion, overseas champion, won multiple GPs, of course, and was National League Riders champion when he was young as well. He rode for many British clubs, Hackney, Ipswich, Kings Lynn, Exeter, Bradford, Wolves, Paul, Peterborough, Eastbourne, and Arena Essex. Absolute British legend. Delighted to bring in Mr. Mark Loram. How's it going, Mark? I'm very good, mate. How are you? Not too bad, mate. Great to have you on. I really appreciate your time, mate. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had to do anything like this. I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> yeah. So, let's get into the questions then, Mark. Uh, how did you get into Speedway, and what was your earliest memory of the sport? It was quite straightforward, really. Um, when I lived, uh, my dad was in the army, and then went later went into the prison service. And um, we lived mm -hmm. literally a mile and a half from Kings Kings Mead Stadium, which is Canterbury, uh, in okay, Kent yeah. when I was growing yeah. up there. And uh, we used yeah. to go there with my dad and watch as a youngster, and um, just went on from there. Really, met. met um, a uh, chap called Brian Foote, who was riding for Canterbury at the time, who sold me yeah. my first ever grass trap bike, and then went on later on to ride around be before the meeting started at Canterbury when yeah. I was sort of um, 11, 12 years old. And that's what I was doing junior grass track. What, what did that feel like, getting to get onto the speedway track after your grass? Did that feel a lot smoother on the speedway track? or? Well, that's right, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, no, no secret that I think grass track made made a man of you when we were young, you know, yeah. at the time. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the the main thing going into Speedway was was grass track. You know, it wasn't like motocross, but it was all like the same thing. There wasn't really a junior Speedway in them days until the later days there was a little bit going on at Eastbourne. But before that, mm -hmm. you had to make it in grass track to then the, – the, the progression was to go on then and ride Speedway. So there was a lot of you guys that come through the grass track. Was that sort of like screenies, yourself? There was a lot of top – Top talented British guys that come through that system. That's right. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like names as you well know, you know, Havy, Screeny, Stoney, yeah. Chris Lurie. You know, these are all lads who, um, you know, grew up together and racing in the junior grass track scene. Because bit like much like um, motocross in them, there was, uh, you know, you, you actually a good junior grass track meeting, a, a top meet, and you you could get up to hundred odd hundred odd riders. You know, which unfortunately yeah. these days is unheard of, but. That mm. really was something that, you know, it was it was the natural progression and the, the stepping stone for Speedway. Mm. A lot of competition. Absolutely. Um, I've got someone, uh, they haven't got their name on there, but it's just come up saying, tell him uh, the race with Chris Louis, the runoff for the British title, was the best race he's ever seen in a British championship. <laughs> yeah, we... Yeah, we all quite often speak about that. I'm a good friend with Chris. I see a lot of him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He's uh, yeah. That that was a one off that race, really. I mean, I think it was a, a case of two. Well, whenever me, Screeny, uh, Chris, you know, Havy, we all rode together. We rode hard together. But we're, you know, you got to remember, we're all really good friends off the track. And um, mm. as much as you know, we give each other room and respect. 
I think yeah. that was probably one race where we probably pushed it a little bit to the limits. I mean, we both had time marks <laughs> up our Kevlar's and that was yeah, a bit of a one-off really, you know. I mean, it, it could have gone either way as you, as you, anyone that saw it well know, you know. Yeah, I was there actually, yeah. It, it was it was pretty tight, but um, was just yeah. enough to get. I think, to be honest with you, I said to Chris, if he hadn't run me up the fence so hard, if I hadn't got angry, I honestly think he'd probably... Yeah, you wouldn't have been pissed off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pissed you off enough to have a go back, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's... Yeah, otherwise he probably would have won. Adam Winslet's just come up on there. Uh, he does a lot of the Farley Castle motocross, uh, the old guys doing the vets and stuff. He's put, was grass track harder than Speedway? I think it was harder in a lot of ways, the fact that, I mean, I guess it's like looking at, pre-65 or, or twin shock motocross mm, so you're riding mm. a bike a bike that was pretty ancient you know in them days <laughs> yeah. when you look at a new motocross bike now to ride an old mako it was like in them yeah, days yeah. you know you were riding a bit of a bone shaker and um <laughs> yeah. it did make a man of you and i think mm. what, where it really used to kick in was when you know, i used to go across the speedway and then we'd go to mm -hmm. poland the likes of me and screeny in the early days of racing the polish league we took to it really well because the tracks were quite rough and the Polish riders and a lot of, you know, the, the sort of European riders, if you like, when it was rough, we, we obviously had a um, quite a big advantage on them because of grass track, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Is that why you guys like to get out in the dirt and uh, mix it in? Well, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's just a natural, like I say, a natural progression. Yeah, yeah. When you're riding, when riding grass track day in, day out and in, in Europe mm. and that, it got pretty rough. And I think it put you on good, good stead for, for Speedway when it was rough. Yeah, 100%. I've got a question here from Vaughan Williams. He was a schoolboy motocross champion himself. He's put, did Loramski ever consider going down the motocross route? And what is his thoughts of motocross? I love motocross. <laughs> you know, obviously, um, yeah. uh, I've got some, you know, good friends around this area that are a lot, you know, ride it. Um, yeah. I follow Jake Nichols a lot because, you know, his dad's yeah. a good friend Jake. of mine and yeah. over the years, um, you know, it's amazing to in me. I'm, I'm in total awe of motocross riders, not, not, you know, the 40 minutes plus two laps, whatever they have to do in a GP is just yeah. unbelievable. The yeah. fitness side of it. I mean, it's a bit different for when I ended my, ended my career riding speed, I'd be riding in Poland, Sweden, you know, UK. So there weren't really a lot of time for training. But what I did find mm. is training helped in the winter as I was getting older. When you're younger, yeah. you low on your natural. But the motocross boys, <laughs> you know, they'll ride one. Yeah, they'll ride a once a month or twice mm. a month. And then, and and you know, people I've watched Jake and he and he'd have to train four times a week and ride the bike four times a week. I mean, there's dedication in, in my opinion. Yeah. There, they're amongst mm. the fittest athletes in the world, and I have nothing but total respect for them. But I did ride a bit of motocross but mainly with yeah. friends of mine to keep yeah to keep fit and yeah. to, i used to struggle to go and push myself at the gym but what it was if we mm. would go to mildenau or chippenham on a sunday we'd pay our 30 pound we'd all ride all day until we we're absolutely knackered and in my way that yeah. was a good way of keeping fit and riding a bike with and enjoy it you know let's face mm. it it's more enjoyable than sitting on a, a rowing machine in the gym yeah, definitely. That's for sure. I noticed that quite a lot of the spear riders did uh, motocross in the window, so it's obviously a good thing. Uh, it's got yeah. a couple more questions coming in. Uh, Brian Evans has put, what suggestions for getting people back to watch Speedway through the turnstiles? Ooh. It's a tough <laughs> one, really, because yeah. the problem is, you know, over the years, things change, people's habits change. Mm -hmm. and I know full well that, you know, the position where I'm running a business now and working, I work... Um, like just this side of Ipswich, so I have to travel home, I don't know, 10 miles, 12 miles. By the time I've got home, have my tea, for me to go mm. then another half an hour back the other side of Ipswich, it's, it's difficult, really. Mm. And um, I think I would never probably have said this when I was riding because Saturday nights were a no-go because I was racing and earning my money in Poland and in the Grand Prix. But really and truthfully, yeah. I think the weekend really is the secret to getting people yeah. to turn, turn sales. Bit of good weather couple of kids go free. I know full well that unfortunately this year got cancelled, but we were supposed mm. to have a few big Saturday meetings at Ipswich this year. Mm. And without yeah. doubt, they'd have done well. Monday yeah. night, bit of rain, everyone's been to work. It's mm. really difficult. And I do feel for yeah. the Speedway authorities because at the end of the day, that's kind of what they're left with, with yeah. the big Polish league taking all the riders and all the money. You kind of have to fit in around them. But really and truthfully, I honestly think... Um, uh, to get you know bums on seats again it's got to be a weekend thing 
Yeah, I even personally remember going to Swindon Speedway when it was a Saturday night growing up, and it's not a school night and all that sort of That's thing. Right. And it makes a big difference. People not working shifts at weekend and all that sort of thing. That's right. I mean, I honestly think as well, the stuff we used to do in Australia, you know, they'd have sidecars. Mm. And I know we're, the problem is in England, we're so restricted, you know, 7.30 yeah. to 9 o'clock, half past mm. nine, then the local council moan. And really and truthfully, if you, if you could cooperate, maybe some flat trackers, you know, some, mm. you know, like um, motocrosses, you know, with different tyres and slightly different, you know, a group of 20 of them out there for a couple of support races. They, they just, mm. In my opinion, it just needs to be a bigger night out. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Phil a uh, Phil Alkins put, uh, does Mark ever see any of his old Hackney Speedway teammates like Mogo or Andy Galvin? I don't really see him, no, to be honest with you. Um, I, I see a lot of the old boys, but um, unfortunately, not not many of the the old Hackney boys. I have seen the, I've oh. seen the Bosleys a few times. Um, out and about when whenever I've been to meetings and they've been about, you know, so yeah. it was sort of set back in time. But I've not really seen many of the Hackney boys, really. I've got quite a good question here from Vaughan. He's put, if there was to be a speedway race with uh, Great Britain's best of the best, who would Mark say will fill the four gate spots and why? Ooh. Well, <laughs> I'd, probably, I'd probably have to go with gate four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell screening. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're not going. You're not going to worry about the start anyway, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, the man at the moment is Ty. You know, um, yeah. which you know, I know. Obviously, Ty was born in England, but I think we all all do forget a little bit um, of the fact that I think we've got a lot of um, Ty's success to thank for Australian Junior Speedway because let's not forget yeah. that he grew up there. Not taking anything mm. away from uh, what the UK. You've seen it doing now is great. Yeah. But in the days yeah. of us all growing up, that sort of thing mm. wasn't there. But mm. you know, you, you've obviously got you got to look at um, Ty. I suppose me, Javi, Screeny, and Chris Louis. I suppose you got to have a five man race. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say we'll be. <laughs> I, was more say it, I was going to say we'll be doing a sixteen lapper at Ipswich in a minute. With that. <laughs> oh blimey! Yeah. Remember them? Did you do any oh, of them, yeah. Mark? I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I did. I did quite a few. Did you? Never managed, to, never managed to win it once. One, once yeah. I was, um, I think I was on course to win it, and my fork legs broke on the last last lap, and I crashed. Oh, okay. When your fork leg breaks going into a corner, you ain't. There's not a lot no. you can really do about it. So <laughs> no. I, I, I always no. think like that. At that was at that stage. You know, you're not destined to win, are you? If that sort of thing happens. I saw some on uh, YouTube, like it was a proper old one with like your Phil Crumps and stuff like that. And uh, John Cook, I think, was winning it, but it looked carnage. They had about four or five reruns. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even uh, Steve Schofield uh, once he was winning it, or he was mm. uh, he was winning it, or right, or he was either third and on course to win it overall. And and a hare ran across the track, hit his front no. wheel, and he crashed. I swear to God, <laughs> you'd never believe it. Wow, you know, Steve Schofield. Yeah, what are the wow. chances of that? Wow, I mean, his, his luck was definitely down then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, right, I'll give you one of my questions here. What riders uh, did you look up to and idolise when you were young and why, Mark? And did you ever get to race any of your heroes? Yeah, I did. I mean, obviously, you forget how old I am. I mean, I raced uh, <laughs> Simon Wig, uh, Hans Nielsen, yeah. Tommy Nudson, all these people that I grew up, yeah, you know, yeah, going yeah. through, going through, um, growing up as a youngster and, and then got to race them and then, lucky enough now and again to beat them um mm. i remember going to to oxford um i think it's a 16 17 year old and racing against hans nielsen and again that night the track mm. was difficult and from reserve i think i only dropped one point to him you know and um that was quite that was quite something simon wick was yeah in the you know the days of the grass track um yeah, simon yeah. Wick was one of the first people to, to make grass track and speedway Bring a what's the right word? Bring it to another level with his big motorhomes and all that, and he, very he professional. Yeah, yeah. With it. And uh, yeah, and then mm. he also obviously was a hell of a rider to to back it up. So I was yeah, I was lucky lucky enough to to ride again. I mean, growing up as a youngster, I don't think I ever had a chance to ride against him. But of course, Chris Morton was one of my favourites. So um, yeah, so, oh yeah, he was I'm a good passer as well. Wasn't many, he? Yeah, yeah, he was good. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, that sort of goes nicely onto my next one. I put, uh, who was the toughest opposition in your British League racing days? There was a lot of guys. It was very stacked throughout the eras you rode in, that's for sure. Yeah, you know what? I think 
there was a lot, obviously, you know, obviously the era I was racing in um, was, uh, you, you can't deny Tony Ricardson was, you know, um, formidable. I mean, to, to even go to a meeting and manage to get a point off of Tony was something else. But um, yeah, him and the likes of Crumpy and, and, the, and the consistency of someone like Lee Adams, they're all, you know, mm. they're all riders that, you know, you, you, you'd go to in a meeting if, yeah. like, if you raced them three times and you beat them once, you'd be happy. Twice you'd be over the moon. Yeah, it does. So good. And, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. a bit like going to, you know, Poland and lowering Thomas Gollop's colours, you know, it's just something that really is yeah. not an easy achievement. And if you managed yeah. to do it once a night, you'd be happy. Yeah, for sure. I remember Hans Nielsen, especially if he'd come anywhere and someone, one of your riders beat him, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, right. I've uh, got Ben yeah, Piggin he here. Up, yeah, he put. So yeah, it was amazing, amazing. Ben Piggins put, in the year of your World Championship win, did you realise that you had a great chance of winning the championship that year? Do you know what? I? Um, yes, I realised it, but I never, obviously, you can't take anything for granted. And I'm not, mm. if I'm honest, I'm not the most, you know, confident of the people, so I did take each round as it comes, and every yeah. time, you know, I ended up, you know, on top coming out of that round, I was thinking, you know, it, you know, this can happen, this can happen. I did believe in myself, but you know, when you always, no matter what you're doing, you always sort of think, well, keep your feet on the ground and just sit through to the end. And it was stressful. And I weren't, I'm, you know, I weren't, I weren't great having massive amounts of pressure. I was normally the one who come in, putting pressure on people. And all of a sudden, when you're at the front, you got target on your back. It did make it rather difficult. But um, yeah, yeah. I, like I say, I just took each each round as it came and just was just lucky enough to be there in the end and like i've said um several times when that season when you got the likes of crumpy lee adams and and uh tony ricardson you know that they're yeah. such good consistent riders you know to actually yeah. be able to win it when they're in the lineup um mm, was just so it's you know unbelievable yeah I pretty much remember. I'm sure I remember the la uh, the last round uh, when the round you wrapped it up, and I remember you were quite nervous. I I think they were trying to interview you and everything. It, it was uh, you could see it was stressing you out. Yeah, I think at the end there, it was just a case of just wanted to crack on right. and get it over with. You know? Yeah, <laughs> get it, yeah, get on with get on with the job as it were. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, right. I got Adam Winsler. He put, "Did you or your mechanic sort out your own bikes?" Um. Well. Most of the time, I was just really me and Nori, and then we used to have a couple of friends help mm. out as well on the continent. And I had a friend, Andy Davey, who used to help me when I was flew back home to race in England. But most of my engines in the end were always done by Brian Carger and um, oh, yeah. and Hans Zirk, who was in Germany. And so basically, we'd be backwards and forwards to Poland, and on the way back, we'd pop into Hans Zirk's, or then Nori would go up to Brian Carger's. It was always really good, really, because Brian having been such a good rider himself, always understood the fact that and he, he always mm. preferred to have a couple of, you know, because it's too easy to blame the equipment. But if you've got yeah. a couple of really good engines from two good tuners, you can then all of a sudden take a look in, take a look in the mirror when things aren't working, you know, because you've got, yeah. it's not just one guy doing your engines, you've got two <laughs> blokes doing your engines. And I think that was, that was a good, good thing really. And, um, and Brian, yeah. not only was he a good rider, he was, he was, in my opinion, a great tuner he could really talk to and relate to. You had a good relationship with Nori. Was that uh, one of your closest sort of relationships with a mechanic that were at the best sort of thing? Well, yeah, I mean, really, Nori was my only uh, full-time mechanic that, you know, started oh, working for me, I think, in the late 90s, you know, all the way through my career yeah. really, until I crashed. So, um, yeah, he, he was great, you know, make, make no um, no secret about it that he, he was the driving force behind it. And I think looking back and looking at a lot of riders around me, I think I did more riding and maybe did more competitions and more traveling than anyone. And a lot yeah. of that was inspired by Nori and at times pushed along. But, you know, when you're, when you've got a career that's short and you have to pack it in and, yeah. and it, you know, and all of a sudden you get the career taken away from you, the, the fact that you do these meetings and you, you get that little bit of a push you need to do because one yeah. day it'll all be finished. And when it's finished, it, when it's not there anymore, it's, it's, a, it's a weird feeling. Yeah, so okay, your yeah. advice is to just do every single meeting and, and enjoy it as much as you can because yeah. you don't know how long it'll be there. Yeah, that's for sure. It's a short career. Um, Nath Mondays put, Mark, if there was any 
any other team in the UK you could have raced for? Would Swindon have been one of them? And did you ever come close to signing for Swindon? I'd like to know that as well, actually. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I'm sure. I probably probably would have done. I mean, Swindon. I, yeah. I I love the old Swindon track. I just didn't ride the, the new track since it got changed. New one, but yeah. Yes, of mm-hmm. course, the race of Swindon. It was yeah, it's great. I mean, again, that was a track I used to love riding, and it, and that was a track yeah. that you knew when you went there. Your man to beat was Lee Adams, and I used to come away yeah. from there if I raced him three times and managed to lower his colours once. I was a happy man. Take that. It was just so yeah. Good there. Yeah, I'll take that. Did then. you ever? Did- did you ever get uh, offered to sign for Swindon at all at any point? Or um, I think, to be honest with you, at the time when Terry Russell took over, we all were yep. you know, always quite close to Terry and obviously his, mm-hmm. his brother Ronnie. And I think yep. I always ended up ended up getting sent more, you know, because they obviously run both tracks at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It could have yep. quite easily happened the year I went to Arena Essex, but as it goes, I went to cover the, the South East post, as it were, and not the West. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so it was, it was close. It was close. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, I've got a Kay Wagner. She's put, did Mark ever have any run-ins with Kenny Carter? No, he, um, I can actually say I'm not old enough, which is quite an achievement. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to say, yeah, I can't remember you riding yeah. yeah, he's, I mean, again, he's not, not someone I knew a lot about, but certainly the, I used to watch the old videos of um, the World Championship when, Ivan was in his pit crew, and you know, obviously he was getting carried on the bike with a broken leg and all mm-hmm. that. Yeah, he's a proper, that. he's a proper, you know, the original Northern Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, rough and ready. Yeah, yeah, he was, ready, he, uh... yeah, he, was he was, he was crazy, you know, but uh, he, <laughs> he was, was yeah. a hell of a rider. Yeah, he was a hell of a rider. Um, I've got a question here for you. Was there a certain bike or engine that you rode over the years that ended up a bit of a favourite? And if so, can you sort of remember them years and times? I think. The years, um, the year I won the world championship, the year before at Paul, I did. Yep. I did have a certain engine that, but you know what, the engine was good. But I, I just, I probably found that without sounding thing or anything. But I was just riding really good at the time. Yeah. You know, you, to be honest, I could have jumped on any engine at the time. It was just yeah, like, yeah. Just great. And then, you know, you could take the engine to Poland and ride on a big track, take it back and ride it at Paul and get a maximum take it to Sweden on Tuesday and, and, you know, so a lot of it, you always end up, I've still got the engine now, you know. Have you? It, yeah, yeah, I've still got the engine. That's cool, that's cool. The World Championship and I ain't quite finished doing wow. it. It's not been long, has it? It's only been uh, 20 yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're still doing it. You quite often find, I'm sure many riders have like an engine that that's their favourite, but yeah. to be brutally honest, I think at the time, if you're riding good and you're on a bit of a crest of a wave, yeah, who knows, flowing. it might not matter what you're riding, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm on the flow, flowing along. Um, what were your favourite tracks in the British League and why? And favourite tracks around the, Europe and the world as well? Well, I got on pretty much really good with all the Polish tracks. Um, yeah. All the, all the tracks in England I got on with. Um, mm. I used to love the Bell, the old Bellevues and the, didn't ride the new one. And the, the Wolverhamptons, the Respawns, the tricky ones, the ones where you're having to turn, mm. you know, yeah, hard, turn yeah. hard in the middle of the corner used to suit me. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Probably, if I'm honest, uh, even though I used to ride quite well there, Sheffield was a bit of a strange track for me because it's just flat out the whole time, you know. Although I used to get good results there, it wasn't necessarily my favourite. Um, and Peterborough was one I did struggle to get on with because I did do a season there in 2001. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. If I'm honest, that was probably the hardest season of my life because um, the promotion and everything there that year, they were great and everything was good about it. but. I just didn't ride the place very well, and um, it was a bit of a struggle. And at the start of the season, um, the guy from Kings Lynn was doing the track, and it was great. But then he disappeared and got left to the people doing the showground. And um, right. to be brutally honest with you, it went it went to pot, and it was no for no one. <laughs> yeah, um, I did struggle with it at Peter, but so if I'm going to say, probably it was probably my least enjoyment, not through any yeah. um, reflection in the promotion, just the track. So it's basically a lot of the tracks is a big thing with the preparation in it for you guys to be able to make passes, be in the right sort of, you know. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you get someone like, you know, when we were at Ipswich, Bob used to do the track and um, Mm. you always knew it'd turn up, it'd be right, it'd be good, Mm. you know. Um, Mm. Yeah, these people need to, I know it sounds mad, but it's like a farmer knowing his crop, you know, they they need to know what they're doing. So many places you turn up and what's really soul destroying you fly back from Poland you get there and you make all the effort there's an hour and a half delay because you know it's like 
28 degrees and someone's just flooded the track beyond recognition and they're panicking and the trackers are out and they just made a mess of it. You know, when you've yeah. made so much effort to get there, that can be a bit soul destroying. Yeah. But, yeah, it yeah. happens, but um, it happens, but it shouldn't do, you know, and track preparation yeah. is what it's all about. If you put your effort in and you turn up there with the right equipment, ready to go. And if they haven't mm. done their job, then it's a waste of time. Yeah. And the riders want to be able to race and put on a show. Um, Peter, uh, Peter Loder here has put, hi, Mark. Thanks for the entertainment at Paul. Uh, also, was there any riders that you feared or disliked? He's asked. <clears throat> Not really, no. I never really never really feared anyone, never never really mm -hmm. disliked anyone. I mean, the classic with Nicky Pedersen, you know, I mean, he's, you know, he's a, he's a character unto his own. He's, he needs yeah, no explanation. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. the thing with Nicky, you, you know full well what he was going to do. You know, and if at the end of the day, if you're off gate four and he's off gate three, you have to think to yourself, well, I think I know his, what his move is on the first corner. He's going to put you in the fence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a really truth. A lot of the time it went against him. Mm -hmm. I remember being at, I remember being paired with Nicky at Eastbourne. And um, I think I was off gate, I was off gate four. Um, mm -hmm. Crumpy was off gate three and Nicky was off gate two. And it took like four or five reruns in heats at 15. Because all they kept doing was running each other in the fence because Nicky was just <laughs> yeah. going to go straight. Yeah. Grumpy being as solid and, you know, such a um, hard not character. Be, uh, he didn't yeah. want it. And they were both challenging for the world championships and neither of them wanted to back down. Yeah. I'm, I'm sat on the outside thinking, I know what's going to happen. I'm off gate four. <laughs> and they're on the inside of me. I think it was four reruns before we finally got around the first corner. I went Love up to him yeah. and I said, well, you two just sort yourselves out. <laughs> I was just going in the first corner, shutting the throttle off and watching them go in the fence. Just cut back, yeah, yeah. So, so there was plenty like that, but um, yeah, you know, no one, no one who really feared. But there was, there was a few, and like I said, their their um, reputation come before them, so you really know what you know what's coming next. To be honest, mm, yeah. Um, Brian Evans has put as Mark kept any of his old bikes. He sort of touched on that uh, you were redoing one. Yeah, I've, I've still got my old bike that I, you know, went over the finish line in the World Championship at the end. Um, and I've still got two more, all complete as of the last road. Um, have you? So, yeah, I've got three by Yeah, I've got everything. Still got Kevlar's, the last ones I wore. Um, nice. Yeah, so I've still got a complete outfit, two bikes, all ready to go. I was ready for... All steady. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pulling my leg at maybe riding it, switch at number seven, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I see Crump is making a comeback. It's all on, isn't it? I know, yeah, it's unbelievable. Oh, what did you make of that, actually, Mark? What did you make of that? Um, I mean, obviously, I thought he was mad. But at the end <laughs> yeah. of the day, I know Crumpy's Crumpy. You know, it's different in Australia. The, I think he goes out a lot of weekends and he's, you know, rides a lot. And uh, he's yeah. kept his hand in at it. I mean, I haven't ridden since my farewell meeting. Yeah. But um, I think it's fantastic. And I think it's also great riders like um, Greg Hancock go on so long, mm. you know, to have a career like they do. And um, to ride as long as he has. The only thing that worried me was, you know, that horrible possibility of him getting hurt. And that's, mm. I know it's, you shouldn't, you know, you don't think of that as a rider. Now, but for me, <laughs> yeah, as an ex-rider, yeah. looking back, and I'm just thinking, you know, oh, I really want them to do it. But if, hand on heart, personally, I, I just, I just worry about him getting hurt at an older age. It's, play, it's difficult to, it's difficult, you know, to heal in you know, when you get a bit older and that. Mm. I know you shouldn't look at it like that, but that's just me personally being a bit of a softy, really. You know. Yeah, I got uh, Ben Piggins put when Ty won his first world title, uh, and you were there to greet him and walk him off the track. That was pure class, like the handover of the GP of Speedway. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, like I said, going back, I mean, I, I get on really um, good with Ty. You know, I speak to. Mm. Him last couple, couple of years I've been to the Grand Prix before this year obviously with all what's been going on and um, always say hello to him always sit there and have a chat um, mm. and yeah to hand it over to him was great I mean, mm. again you know obviously Ty being you know under the you know the ACU UK barrier you know yeah. sort of banner if you like um, mm -hmm. but like, like I say he, he, but we have to have to remember in my opinion that he, you know we still got Australian junior speedway and especially at Perth to to thank for his um you know his rapid rise in the sport really mm -hmm. I've got a question here from Barney Kennett he's put hi hey. mate great to, great to see you my mascot <laughs> that's right yeah 
Yeah, that's <laughs> going back to the Kingsmead Kingsmead days. You had Barney. Yeah. You know, Barney in the team, and um, obviously I was the mascot there. And at that time, Denzel Kent was riding there, and loading, you know, all the old boys. So, so you still used to see Barney at the um, the the veterans or the you know World Speed Riders Association dudes and that. And yeah. He don't yeah. change a bit. You know, he's still as fit as a <laughs> He's a lovely old <laughs> boy. It's, it's great to see him, you know. But yeah, one another one of my childhood heroes. But he weren't very good at wheelies. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple of old uh, pictures here. Actually, I'm going to get them up. Uh, you can get them up on the screen. There's one here. Look. That's the one. Yeah, that's Graham Murray. <laughs> me there behind me. I've got under. Ah, right. Another, yeah, another big. That's I've been Paul speaking Murray. to him as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've been Paul speaking Graham's, to Graham Murray. Yeah, Graham's Graham's another big influence of mine from Grass Track. Um, oh, Graham was yeah. kind of my. Obviously, your dad always helps you through your career, but when you got a dad yeah, that didn't yeah. ride, um, yeah. growing up junior, especially in the grass track days, um, Graham was like my dad that that rode. If you know what I mean, he had yeah, I, yeah, mentor, he did an yeah. awful lot for me yeah, in, in the early days, pointed me in the right direction. Best thing about Graham was, uh, you know, there was no there was no pamby pamby and around. He was straight yeah. point, and if you weren't doing the job right, then he'd tell you, you know. And I think. Learning from an early age that I stuck, you know, it didn't do me any harm. It didn't do me any harm at all. So that's that's Paul next to me on the little bike. Ah, uh, right. So it's just yeah, Graham's been speaking to me sort of the last couple of weeks yeah, and said to me, "Oh, get Egon Muller on and sort of contacting a few guys for me." So that's pretty cool. There's another one there. Look, yeah, the old Kestrels. Look look lovely. Yeah, Hackney Kestrels. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've still got an old pair of uh, old, but yeah, it's long track. That is that yeah, one. got another still got an old pair of. Kevlar's from when I was 18 that I can still get into, so I'm quite happy with that. I've actually got a question of that. Was actually, did you actually have any favourite leathers or Kevlar's that you rode over the years? I know you guys <clears> sort of changed them a lot, but did you have any favourites? Um, obviously, I, my actual favourite were they're the ones I've still got hanging in the them levers there. I've still Are got they? them hanging in, my, yeah, still got them hanging in my garage, and I, um, I can still get wow. into them when I breathe when I breathe in a lot with a pair of pliers. <laughs> See, that might you're still fit. You're still fit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, good. Yeah, That's good. Favorite pair of Kevlar's was the one I think from 1999 when I rode at Paul. Got a nice uh, picture here, look, of the uh... old grass track. That's the screeny behind me. Yeah, look at the. You can see the difference of the plenty of soil on there. That's right. Yeah, it was a bit <laughs> rugged, wasn't it? Some great days there, like the old Bradford. Bradford, yeah, great days they were. That was a hell of a team back the, here, and me, me screaming. She won the lead, there, didn't um, you? Yeah, me screaming. Mm. I think I'm pretty sure. Right in saying that, um, I think uh, that's the only place I think I actually managed to win the league with them in, in the year. Uh, yeah. I got a uh, Claire. Claire Dunn has put hi, Mark. Hope all is good. Did you have a favourite? Uh, British season 97 at Bradford as we just looked at always yeah. sticks in my mind used to travel up from Surrey to watch you guys yeah I think if I'm if I'm brutally honest mm. Bradford was a great great season but also um the two years I rode at Paul stood mm. out really because not so much you know everyone down at Paul they're um great people great sponsors I love the track mm. love riding there there's nothing like yeah. turning up and riding in front of a, a big crowd every week. It just yeah. lifts your morale no matter whether you've had a bad meeting or not. Um, like I say, great, lovely bunch of people. Um, mm. But at the end of the day, the two years I rode there, I rode I rode really well, you know, mm. which has got to help, hasn't it? You know, when you're on a bit of a yeah. crest of a wave, it all goes, you know, I wouldn't say easy, but everything's going your way. But yeah. it's all added together. And But I've also had good years at Wolverhampton I enjoyed riding. Exeter, I enjoyed yeah. riding all for different reasons, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, Exeter was an absolutely fearless track. I mean, it was, yeah. it, was it was scary, you know, it was a scary yeah. track. But to be Mental. a home rider, to mm. be a home rider, all of a sudden you're going there every week, mm. you treat it with respect. But secondly, you, you're not the scared one anymore, it's the others. So I could yeah. safely say, apart from Crumpy, maybe one of the Carlsons, you know, a lot of the teams that came there. You know, I used to have some great races with Boise there because he, he was fearless. But, the, you know, a lot yeah. of riders didn't like the place and you'd get some... No, they'd hug the white line, wouldn't they? There. And they'd ride quite ordinary. So there's, there's yeah. lots of different seasons at lots of different tracks. Eastbourne, he used to love Eastbourne for them tight first corners, you know. And yeah. just Bob, Bob bless him on the, tr on the tractor, you know, just doctoring the track exactly how we wanted it, <laughs> you know. 
that stuff just don't happen. Anymore. That's always good. But, That's always yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Back to, then, yeah. Put, he used to put grip around the outside of the track, you know, yeah. for, for me that you know, I could just literally show him, tell him, and he would just put it there, you know. It's yeah. just great. That's beautiful, isn't it? You clip the old dirt and away you go. I see it around the fence. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Especially at Exeter when they're all hugging the yeah. white line, scared to death of it. <laughs> Uh, I've got right. uh, Anthony Boyd on YouTube's put, looking well, Mark. Hope you're all keeping well, sir. Anthony Boyd there? Yeah, he's, yeah, old mate of screenies, I think. Oh, yeah. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, right, okay. Uh, what have we got here? Love watching Market Ipswich. I've uh, got Chris Page. He's put, loved watching Market Ipswich and how much throttle he should give going into the bends. Drew Kemp does the same. Great to watch. Yeah, he's, he's a good lad, uh, Drew Kemp, I've spoken to him a couple of times. Um, seems like he's got a head on his shoulders and got a good, lot of good help around him. Um, hopefully, you know, big, big things to come from him in the future. So we'll all be watching. Um, but it's nice because he is a local lad. Um, yeah. I grew up, I think, in, he grew, grew up in Clayton, which is, you know, near Ipswich. And um, yeah, we'll all be hoping for big things of him. You know, we need it. We need him coming through. Yeah, for sure. Uh, got Phil Al Alkins put, did, did Mark enjoy his time racing for the Kestrels and how did he find the original Hackney track? Well, yeah, that was a man's track as well. <laughs> and remember going, remember going to Hackney on a Saturday afternoon for practice. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you're talking in, uh, 84, 85, 86, just before I started riding at Hackney and, um, yep. There's some great characters there, you know. I mean, again, he used to watch Bo Peterson ride, you know, practice around there. Yeah. I used to watch yeah. him for hours because he was a hell of a rider. Yeah. And he used to just, he used to, I mean, the track was, again, tracks in them days, they used to turn up and you'd ride them and they'd be pretty difficult to ride. And I think yeah. that's what made riders a little bit more, a little bit more, hard, not hard of wearing, it's probably the wrong way, but a little bit, mm. you know, ready to attack tracks because yeah. I used to go into the corners and it'd be rough as anything. An old boy, Bert, Bert Bush, used to do the track there. And he'd go, oh, yeah. just get on with it. It's all right. And it'd been prepared for stock, for like um, sidecars because you'd come out the corner, it'd be slick. And going in, it'd be a foot deep. Like he's prepared Mind it man. the wrong way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he'd say, say, what are you effing hell's up? You just can get out and ride it, you know. And that's what we used to do. Someone like yeah. Martin Hagen would turn up and, um, and Bo Peterson. And yeah. then uh, you know, then you'd have the, the, the local the local lads like Steve Verge, Cl Cliff Ott, and all them <laughs> boys. You know, and they, they on, just man. used to go out there and just put each other in the fence. And <laughs> yeah. Saturday afternoon was just a, an absolute laugh. You know, but, yeah. yeah. Watching someone like Bo Peterson in, that, in them days, he used, to sort of, he used to sort of say, "The faster you go over the bumps, the straighter you can, the quicker you'll go in the corner." And it's stuff like that you remember and. Mm. And you, used to, you know, but you're 16 years old. They just used to tell you to do that. So you used to do it. Just end up yeah. in the fence. <laughs> just crashing yeah. a bit. Of yeah, you know. straight through. Yeah, yeah you to learn, learn the hard way. Got to learn the hard way, as it were. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed Bo Peterson at Swindon as well when he came to. Yeah, he was great. Uh, I've really uh, got Jason Colthorpe. He's put. <laughs> it's quite funny. If you and Chris Louie raced each other tomorrow at Foxall, who would win? <laughs> To be honest with you, I've got to probably say Chris because he's probably, he's probably, <laughs> yeah, I've got to be honest, he's ridden a lot more recently than me. You know, he, he tells me, I think a couple of years ago, um, he was going to go down to France and he went down and had a few laps down there. And I was supposed to go this year with a good friend of mine, Steve Ware, and a few of the boys were to go down there. And, and uh, I didn't get around to going, you know, in the end because I was busy at work and stuff. But I really yeah. would like to. But there's a part of me sort of wants to and a part of me sort of thinks, well, I'll end up going way too quick for my ability. You know, <laughs> yeah. end, up, end up growing horns and crashing just trying to beat him, you know. So I'll leave it to him, really. Yeah, you sort of think to yourself, you're not really made just to have a little pot around. Yeah, sort exactly. Of... It don't happen. It's don't hard happen. to do, isn't it? Hard to do that. I'm thinking yeah, about that now. Right, but you, you, you know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could cruise around. Um, <laughs> no, definitely not. It'd be boring. Uh, ben Pig input. Who was the most naturally talented rider who rode? Do you feel that never won the world title? Quite a few uh, of them. I think there's been a few. Yeah, I mean the first one mm. I think is Lee Adams. Lee Adams, sure. yeah, I was yeah, yeah. Um, sure, yeah. Not only that, just not just naturally talented, but consistent and mm. good enough by you know tenfold. And um, you got the Moran brothers. Obviously, they stick out. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, there's been quite a few screeny, you know, these these he had yeah, more very talent, talented. Than he, yeah, more talent in his little finger than most people, you know. So, <laughs> you know, he, he was incredible. Yeah. So there's, there's yeah, been quite, quite a few, but there there quite are a few that, yeah, there are a few that actually um, spring to mind. Yeah. Okay, I've got uh, Heidi Holloway is put looking well, Mark. Hope you're okay and staying safe. Trying to. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, no name on this one, but they've put Lee. Ask Mark at the time he lived with us and had a great friend in our Rockweiler dog. So I'm hoping you know. Yeah, that yeah, that'll be Ari. That one, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah that was a yeah, that was a bit of a scary incident. But used to wrestle <laughs> with young, used to mess about with young Paul, and then one day his his Rockweiler he had at the time. Yeah, we looked like we we're going to fall down the stairs. So he, he sort of pulled a pair of us up the hallway by our ankles, you know, this big old rot one. <laughs> so you sort of thought he was probably doing us a favour, but nearly ripped our legs off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that sounds dodgy. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit uh, scary. A bit scary. I got Viv Greenwood put, hi, Lauro, you're looking wow. And what was the worst track you ever rode on? Viv Greenwood. Uh, probably going back to, uh, to oh, if I can remember, 2001, they did, they in the Grand Prix that year, they did a lot of, the, it was early days of the made up tracks, you know, the one off tracks. And they had the, um, we turned up to Berlin, I think, and they had the yeah. wisdom to put, to put plastic down over the top of the, the, the running track, you know, the athletics track. Yeah, yeah. They put the plastic down and then basically put all the dirt in and then rolled it, which was fine. But then mm -hmm. they had three days of rain and there was nowhere for the water to go. So it did just <laughs> literally turn into like a big a big pudding really it was just all mm. I mean, it was absolutely hideous and when everyone that was my defending year and when i you turn up there and you've worked hard in the winter and you've got everything ready and you're ready to go mm. and you see that, knock, yeah. knock out bases at the time when you turn up you look at that you just think what the hell's going on but it was it was horrendous <laughs> if you remember um yeah anchor gustafson ended up doing pretty good in it but in the end they were just literally wading around in the mud you know it's just a yeah, really that's awful that was good. probably the worst really okay cool oh i've got uh sean tacy's just popped up on the thing he's put a good lad good friend we've had many memories me bringing his long track uh bike back from south of france was one of the first good lad a lot of time for mark Remember Sean? Yeah, 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 Sean, yeah, good luck, good boy. He's um, good right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> last see him a while, while back, um, actually bumped into him away skiing somewhere, and it, I heard this someone shout me voice from the other side of the, the slope, and um, lo and behold, it was him. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good, luck, good luck, lad, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I've got Andy Drivers put, I'm going to buy one of those GT140s, Laramski. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what you need. Maybe I should get one of them and all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, He's also asked, me. yeah, don't tell me. Yeah. He's also asked, what do you think of Youth Speedway? I think it's, I mean, I, I think it's definitely getting better. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting there. I mean, uh, it seems to me now they've got quite a good thing going with the pole tech thing, you know, mm. and um, it's getting better. Um, it can never mm. be. It can never be perfect because it, it, there's not the funding there, you know. I mean, I remember years ago they asked me to, to possibly do something, and it was at the time when I hadn't long finished, and I was then sort of getting the yeah. business up and running. And um, yeah. I'd love to have done something, but unfortunately at the time the, the, the funding just wasn't there because I was saying to the BSBA at the time, um, you know, you want these kids to be good when they're 15, 16, 17 years old. If they're going to be good international top riders, they've got to succeed in Poland. That yeah. is where, not only from a selfish point of view, from the rider financially, but that is where you make your name. And I said, you need to get all these good young lads and take two sprinter vans with a, full of bikes and all the kit, take these lads with one mechanic each, and you spend two weeks riding at the tracks. And after that, you sort out three or four test matches yeah and um at the time they sort of said yeah 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 you know but there's no money to do it mm -hmm. um which was a shame but it certainly seems to me now certainly from the grassroots i the one two fives you know that sort yeah, of yeah. Era, yeah, um, stage they seem mm -hmm. to be really getting that side of it sorted but where you really you know these kids will come through that and if they're good they're good you can see they're good mm -hmm. where you need to step it up a level is at 15 16 17 years old they need yeah. to 
somehow spend time in Poland. It's as simple as that. You only have to look at it. At the moment, the sport, the, the, the capital of the sport is in Poland. And yeah. unless they go and do like Robert Lambert, who spent a lot of time living in Europe and racing in Europe, unless you can do that, you're going to be up against yeah. it. The likes yeah. of me and Screeny were lucky because we went, to, we went, used to go to Poland and we used to um, ride over there every Sunday when we weren't riding grass track and then at a later date, grass track had to take a back seat. Yeah. We, we broke Poland. In, you know, it, it seems to me there was like the likes of me, Lee Adams, Screeny, Chris Louie. There was a number of good top riders making it in Poland. There seems to be a lack of that happening now. And unless they ride there, mm-hmm. with the greatest respect, if you don't break Poland or at least get a regular team spot, yeah. you're not going to make it in the World Championship. Behind the eight ball, yeah. 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 It's the most competitive by far, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I've got... I got a question from oh actually Steve Carter. He's put hi Mark. I'm watching from Brisbane. Great to see you. Nice. Loved our time in the GPs in the Owen Brothers team with LAR and all the best, mate. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, one of the team. Yeah, all the boys from Swindon. But yeah, good good days. Um, I was thinking about Randy today actually. You know, and you know Owen Brothers and the team we had running. Again, it was early yeah, days nice. that sort of thing. But I think it did raise it raised a bit of a raised the profile of the sport a little bit to get the teams going. Obviously, you had team yeah. backside at the beginning. They got it going and, you know, and others followed suit. So, um, yeah, but it, it was, they were good days, mate. Yeah, good days. Did, did look Roll Brody. Yeah, Brody, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love the Brodies. Um, got Neil Howard. He's put, hi, Mark, a big fan of yours back in the late 80s and 90s, a Kings Lynn fan. Where would you say uh, was when you was at your best? I think, uh, like I said, uh, 1998, 99, I'd say 97 to 2000 were the best, where mm-hmm. I was riding the best, to be honest, definitely. Yep. That was the, in the sort of pool time as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Going from, yeah. Um, going from probably, oh, yeah, went from, I think, Exeter, then on to yep. uh, Bradford, Wolverhampton. Yep. 97, yeah, 97, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember coming, going down to Paul. I had a friend, a motocross friend down there that lived in Bournemouth Way, and I come down to Paul, and it just seemed a bit of a special night down there at that sort of time when you yeah. were riding down there. Just entertainment, atmosphere, it sort of had, a, it, had it all, really. Yeah, and it also, um, mm. you know, without being disrespectful to any other teams, it was mm. the Man United Speedway, do you know what I mean? So if you yeah, at there, the time, yeah, yeah. It was the, it was the team in the league, yeah. it was the place to ride. Yeah. Yeah, crowd and atmosphere was brilliant. Yeah. Um, someone's put no name on this when they've put the best grass track you've ever rode. Oh, um, I think I've ridden. Uh, I used to I used to enjoy the bonfire burn ups in Kent in in, in the UK. Um, yeah. The Ace of Aces. Well, yeah, um, yeah, the Ace of Aces. Yeah, the Bartleys used to run in the year, years ago. Good you know? old, good ones. Yeah, yeah, the good days they were. They were massive. I mean, they were bigger. Yeah, you, know, you took massive, thousands yeah. of people. Page three mm. girls there, and they used to, <laughs> you know, um, that was they, they, that was they were great days, really. Um, yeah, yeah. They, I don't think they got any bigger than that, really. I'm, you know, they, they were big, big events. Um, right, I've got Barney Kennett put great show you two, brilliant to see you Mark, great to catch up with your all the best from Barney hey, mate. Uh, and then i got uh, no name on this one, it put what does Mark think of the points limit, breaking up teams uh, has made the sport weaker in the UK sorry mate, can you just repeat that, I'm sorry yeah, no problem, uh, someone's put uh, what does Mark think of the points limits that breaking up teams in the UK has it made the sport weaker in the UK etc to be honest with you, the problem is it, it, you can only do that. You can only make it. I know it makes it weaker, but it's inevitable mm. because you don't, again, you can't have the, the Man United style of team, you know, a bit like in, like in the Premiership, three or four or five clubs that have got so much money and the rest mm. will just pick up the pieces. Because yeah. of Poland, you can't, it's nice to see the likes of Crumpy and uh, Nicky Pedersen coming back to Sheffield this yeah. year and that. Yeah. And, and, and Doyley staying on. You need mm-hmm. that, but to be able mm-hmm. to get them blokes there, you know, that a lot of them are earning so much money in Poland, they can't they can't take the risk to ride in Poland, in England yeah. for less money, you yeah. know, because the Polish clubs are just on 
to them. Yeah. And they almost forbid and from doing so. So you have yeah. to unfortunately have a points limit. It's, it's inevitable. You know, so it's the lesser of two evils. And the other one is that, you know, one team gets all the good riders and that'll be it. Yeah. I got uh, a few people uh, saying some nice things here. Nick Simmons put Laramski. What a racer and what a great guy. Uh, Peter Bowles has put loved watching Mark beat everyone around Eastbourne. He was exciting, plenty of action. Sounds like Mark. <laughs> uh, Keith Hill put I watched Mark from the early days at Hackney. What a team we had in 1988 and did the double. Yeah, they were good days, weren't they? Early days. Did love the did love the Hackney days. All the Kestrels yeah. in them days. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Chris Page put Mark. Do you think who do you think will be the next British world champion other than Ty? Let's hope it's someone like um I don't know, really. I mean there's, there's, a, there's a good few young lads go through. Um I haven't I haven't had a chance to watch much of them because obviously they don't don't come to Ipswich much. And I only really watch live yeah. at Ipswich, but um there's certainly some good promising youngsters through and let's just hope they they take that extra step to be able to get there. I suppose Lambert, Lambert is going to be the next sort of yeah. one where people are looking at. He won the European. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hopefully, you know, if he keeps it. He's certainly got it. it obviously, it's just consistency, but um, that's the hard bit. But he's definitely got the quality. Mm. Uh, Michael McCormick's on YouTube has put 1990 bonfire burnout winner Mark. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> that one, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. He's got a nice question here. Jason Colthorpe has put, "Who was the best and worst promoter that you rode for?" Um, I'll be honest with you. I never really had a bad yeah. promoter, and that's, that's not good. just saying that to be politically. Yeah, correct. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's we had, good. We had a lot of good promoters, and um, mm. obviously you had. Uh, I used to love it because you had the likes of the Ham Brothers at Bradford were great. Chris Van Stratton was great, you know. I, I, I rode for for some fantastic promoters. Um, obviously, Matt Ford at Paul, you know, goes without saying. He's always run the yeah, business yeah. well. Yeah. Colin Hill was a funny one. That, that excited, bless him. I remember him, ago. yeah. It's like when he yeah, had the beard and the yeah, yeah. He was hilarious. And um, mm. Colin, Colin used to uh, run an interesting show, let me tell you. He was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Good laughs there, then, was it? Yeah, it was a good laugh, yeah. <laughs> uh, one of my questions was, did you used to have any superstitions or anything, Mark, when you raced? Um, I had superstitions when I was a kid. I used to have, like, a lucky scarf from um, when I first started racing grass track. And uh, okay. my mum gave it to me when I was little. And um, yeah. it was like a red, it's like a Dukes of Hazard scarf, really, you know what I mean? All oh, right, okay. And I yeah, used yeah. to wear it around my neck to begin with. But then when obviously yeah. it became unfashionable, I used to sort of put, <laughs> tuck it inside in me, but like body armour. Oh, then, right, um, okay, so you still had it on and then, Yeah, and then this was like something uh, like a baby or a child would have, and it had just been used so much. It was like a tattered old cloth. <laughs> yeah. So in the end, I think it was only literally when I first started riding at Hackney that I um, actually had to, brave it and I'd do the first few meetings about it and then realise I, I wasn't going to, you know, wasn't going to die after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that one. I like that one. Uh, right, another question I had. Obviously, you won the World Championship of GPs in 2000. What did that actually mean to you at the time? What was the feeling after? It must have been amazing when that was all done and the relief. And Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I like to think, I mean, I, I put in a lot, quite a lot of effort into me racing over the years. Um, mm -hmm. tried always tried my hardest always wasn't always successful you know I had bad nights like anyone but the one thing I could say is that I always always gave it 100% you know always mm -hmm. done my best on the night and I think mm -hmm. all that was really is um, I, used, I used to enjoy the fact that people would come up after me and say you know really enjoyed that you're worth the admission alone blah 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 without you know bigging myself out I'm not doing that at all but that I'll do that for you <laughs> that, that gives me that gave me uh, more enjoyment than anything, to be honest. Yeah, I, yeah. In my phone, silly little way, winning the world championship was not it was obviously for all the people that enjoyed right watching me race and all the people that supported. Yeah, me, but back to it. It yeah. was also it was also selfishly my little prize for the effort I put in. Mm. That's the sort of in a strange way. That's the only way I can really look at it. To be fair, everyone I still speak to now, Mark, and everyone's writing down in these comments. I can see like extra memories coming down. Everyone, you're. 
you said that that made you feel good that but the entertainment wise and the uh the pure entertainment you were that's for sure it was great to watch but that's what I, that's what i really enjoyed i enjoyed when people it's amazing mate. after meeting and and say that you know mm. that was enough for me really yeah it's awesome uh lee britain put mark was there a favorite race that you sticks in your memory um probably that one with chris um was one of the, yeah, one of the good ones but yeah run off yeah i think yeah I, I think um i had a number of favorite races um a lot of them were just literally when you like snatch something over the finish line there's too many to really mention yeah. or remember yeah but um a lot of, a lot of um big races you'd win um and you have such you know you, you bit someone like chester hover in poland and the big thirty-five thousand people you know and it, i remember a, a race where literally you'd win the meeting on the last corner and you can mm. imagine that the stadium just erupted you know that's but, pretty, um, that's awesome but it, there's lots of races that i you know but it it was normally when i've come from third or whatever and, and ended up winning the race mm. Luckily, you've done plenty. You know, you've done plenty of them from that. behind. That's right. <laughs> done quite so, a few of them you know, from behind. <laughs> too many to itemise, but they were all. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. I've got a Polish lad, Marcin Rogalski, put Mark Laram, superstar in Torren. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Torren was a that was another good good place. For, uh, good lot of fond memories in Torren in Poland. Um, again, had so many different Polish tracks and so many different Polish people support me and over the years so again i was one of those was lucky enough to to make it to a good level in poland and i and i've had very many years there you know not only earning a living but enjoying it you know yeah that's the main thing as well uh you had a steven zetter war he put link open gp in sweden when it was rain and you had a good one against ricardson and jimmy nielsen must have been a good one yeah i think off the top of my head i think i was third and i passed um yeah past Ricard and Angie Nielsen in the final to win it so yeah I don't think it gets any better than that no very good uh obviously you won your three British championships um what did they mean to you was there sort of a favorite a first one was your favorite or meant something how special were they to you to win them um yeah I mean to be honest with you the the British championship again I'm not not just being thing but in in them days it was a <laughs> It, it was it was a big event, you know. Um, I think the British Championship lost a bit of prestige in the last five, six, seven years, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah. But in the early days at Coventry, it was a big event. Coventry it was, was amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was it was a big event, and um, to yeah, win it, again, it was. I mean, there were tough meetings in them days, you know, really tough. Yeah. Meetings. You had like <laughs> of, you know, Screeny and Chris Louie and you stacked on it in the early days. Yeah, I mean, it was heavy, uh, heavy. Uh, yeah, heavy. Yeah, Anyone could win it. So um, any mm. yeah, any British championship, in my opinion, when it left Coventry, mm. uh, it weren't, did it lose it a little bit. Yeah, mm. lost the spark a little bit there. Yeah, and again, I, did, I was like, that was to do with Poland, but you know, yeah, because I, I, I admit I was one of the ones that might have been the nail in the coffin for the Sunday British final because obviously I had to ride in Poland. But um, I yeah. think when it left when it left Coventry, it was a it was a different meeting. Different meeting altogether. Yeah, for sure. I was just laughing there because I just spotted this question in the corner of my eye. Uh, Michael McCormick put, it was a classic when Mark told Susie Perry live on air, he loved it from behind and then said sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's think, I remember that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's classic. Hilarious, yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, that's a funny day. Trust, tr trust you, Michael, to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh Keith, Keith Keith Hill put did you prefer racing the upright or the lay down and why? That's an interesting one. Um I think both really. I mean I think there was a mm. transition period where I was lucky enough to have one of the um Klaus Lausch was doing the up the lay downs when they first tran the transition. Um yeah. I I used to like riding both of them, like I say, I was just lucky that we were I was bang on it as soon as the, the lay down came in. I am um, mm -hmm. Oh, I, had, I had the best money could buy, to be honest. Yeah, that's good then. <laughs> uh, Phil, El yeah, it does, mate. Yeah, Phil Elkin. If you had your time again, would you have done anything different in your career? Um, no, I don't think I would have done really. I mean, I probably would have nah. tried like a, a sports psychologist a bit earlier and done a bit more 
you know, at the end of the day, the sport was different in my day. You know, you just ended up riding. I mean, I was riding one meeting. Uh, we did 72,000 miles in the van between March and October. And we rode in 144 meetings, you know, all over Europe. And Massive there isn't really a, Yeah, there isn't a lot of time because it was like the Camel Cup individual meetings. I did, I think, 42, 45 meetings in Poland and in Bloody Sweden. Hell. And I was doing meetings in Denmark and the Grand Prix. So... You know, them years I wouldn't change, but I think in the latter years, probably I could have worked hard a little bit, a little bit harder myself mm. at it and um, possibly got a little bit more. Ironically, the year I crashed and broke my leg and finished, I was probably mm. fitter than I had been for a long time. So it's a bit of a shame, really. Yeah, I remember that. It was really sad. Uh, Jason Colthorpe's put, if you could have one more race, who would the other three riders be you'd want in the race? If you could have one more. Um, Huh. I think I'd have to say Chris Louis, Screeny and Havy. Cool, for old man. time's sake. Yeah, that'd be good. Havy <laughs> going inside, he'd be all right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he'd be hugging the white line, wouldn't he? Yeah, me and Screeny would be out on the outside. Be all right. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely be out there. Um, Adam Winslet's got a good question. He's put, what was your routine on the start line? Were you calm or were you g up? What goes through your mind? Uh, I think I was relatively race, calm, to be honest with you. Yeah, I didn't really have a set. Quite laid back. Mm. Yeah, just for this few you seemed a laid back guy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. What was it? Kay Wagner put what made him decide to take up speedway as a career? Um, I think it was just a natural progression from from grass track, to be honest. I was doing Welling Junior yeah. Grass Track. I won a couple of British titles doing that. And I think the natural progression is when you're sixteen, went to ride at Hackney with uh, Dave Pavitt and went on from there, really. Uh, one of my questions was, what riders were your favourite to team ride with and why? Um, I think Chris Lou is one of the best because he we, we had opposite riding styles. Uh, it was yeah, always yeah. a problem with me and Screeny. When me and Screeny tried to <laughs> team ride, it was always a problem. But yeah, uh, yeah but other well, than that. Always want to be in the same yeah, spot. Always <laughs> someone like, exactly, yeah, so it worked well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who actually come up with the nickname Laramski then, Matt? Was that yourself or that someone was, else come out with that? Yeah. That was um, that was um, Andrew Silver and Gary Havelock. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the on the. Oh, I love Andrew yeah. Silver. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. right, they come so, out yeah. with that. Yeah, so <laughs> that's quite yeah. cool. Uh, what have we got here? Who was your closest uh, friends during your speedway career, and how easy was it to actually block that friendship out once the old tapes went up and stuff? Well, I guess like again, it's it's the same three really. You know, Javi, Screeny and, and Chris were always real good friends. Never yeah. really had a problem blocking it out, to be honest. It was always good. <laughs> good times between you guys. If you've got any funny yeah. stories, can tell us. <laughs> Only about when Norrie left me in the petrol station once on the way to um, on the way from Germany to Poland. No. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we'd been to been to Poland. We were travelling to Tommy Nudson's farewell meeting. Um, yeah. I always had, a, in the back of the Sprinter, had a big double bed. I'd be asleep. Um, yeah. Laurie would be driving and then what he would do is when it got daylight he would wake up and then I would take over driving so going all the way through Germany Norrie stopped a couple of times for a cigarette or fuel and diesel yeah. or whatever this yeah. one time I jumped out went in the bushes, bushes and had a wee <laughs> he took off in the van I'm just literally in a pair of trousers t-shirt and trainers no. and run after the van obviously he'd gone I then had no money, no phone, nothing, because obviously it was all in the van. Oh Norrie God. proceeded to drive three and a half hours away from me. No! <laughs> yeah, well, I was left in the petrol station. Early days, <laughs> the mobile phone was switched off. Yeah. So then, oh basically, God. long story short, he had stopped yeah. another two times. And then in the end, finally got to about daylight, somewhere up in North <laughs> Germany, Put his head on the steering wheel and said, Mark, you're going to have to drive. I'm tired. And as he turned around, he realised I wasn't there. So wow. He had to then, he had not only had to drive back three and a half hours, he had to stop another three times at different petrol stations to find out which one I was at. To where you were, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. So about five and a half hours later, he come back to get me. And I've been sat in a petrol station all that time waiting. We then got in the van and said, look, we can't ring Tommy Nudson and let him down because he'll think, oh, they're just making a story up. You know, yeah, they'll never yeah. believe it. So yeah, we yeah. literally we drove flat out all the way to Tommy Nudson's farewell in Voyans. Just yeah. as we got there, the heavens opened, it got rained off. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't make out, could you? Station. 
Can we make it up? We like them. Um, you won yeah. a you won a lot you won a lot in teams and as an individual. Did you prefer to be part of a team or did you prefer individual racing? Didn't bother me to be honest, but no. Yeah, I mean, no, I no. Both, really. I mean, obviously, I had success with uh, a relative amount of success for both. So, um, probably would like yeah. to win a few more titles if I'm honest, as a team. But yeah, yeah. didn't really worry me. <laughs> there was some certainly some dodgy old uh, changing rooms. Uh, I, I think I suspect they still are now in the British League, but uh, I've heard they're very unprofessional. Some of the old changing rooms that they mark in the British League. Yeah, they are a bit, mate. <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> any decent ones. <laughs> Bradford is one went too bad, was it? Bradford went too bad, uh, I suppose, yeah. was it? Because of, of the rugby? Yeah, it was yeah. rugby club, so that was lovely, but that was about the only one, really, yeah. The rest <laughs> of them were pretty, pretty, uh, pretty filthy, really. Not good. No. Uh, you won the overseas final as well, didn't you? What do you remember about that? What was your memories of that one? Um, I think it was at Kings Lynn. Um, mm. Yeah, that was in the days when you had to go, that was before the, I, I rode in the last one off world final at Boyens, and I think that was on the run-up to that, so. Yeah, different way of going about the world championship, but obviously it was. I was quite pleased in a way and quite lucky to have ridden in one of the last one off world finals. That was good. Someone's put, How many times has Nicky Pedersen knocked you off and did you repay the compliment? <laughs> um, do you know what? I, I can't really remember. I don't think he really has, but he's just come incredibly close. But there again, he hasn't <laughs> nearly knocked off. You know what I mean? He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Off, bless so. him, bless him. Yeah, he looks there. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I did have a question saying which riders was there any riders you didn't weren't too keen on racing with? Any guys that you sort of always seem to have run ins with or anything? Was there any guys like that with you? No, no, not really. Um, no, no I didn't. I mean, I had a few runs with people, but it was nothing out of the ordinary because at the end of the day, is you know, not obvious part of it. You, you, you get to know who, which ones to steer clear of a little bit, simple as that, really. Yeah. You know, and if you if you get done by more than two times, then you're an idiot and you're not learning. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. If you if you could give good advice, Mark, to a youngster out there who wants to become a pro speedo rider, what would it be? Um, well, the ones that are already doing it, that want to make it, then obviously they need to get, you know, the like I said a little while ago in depth, that Poland is a place where you need to need to make your bread and butter, but not only that, where you need to make your money and well, your money and you you know you need to succeed to go forward. In the sport then that's where you need to make it it's as simple as that but for the youngsters just coming through just try and not lose the sight of the fact that you you know as much as you want to do well and people want you to do well and you'll get an element of pressure you know you've got to try and just keep enjoying it and with enjoyment comes results because when you stop enjoying it the results stop do you still follow speedway much at all now the british league and the gp mark not really, mate. I mean, I don't think any of us have this year, but I still watch a lot of Grand Prix. But um, mm. it's, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy the Grand Prix. I mean, it's, it's obviously changed an awful lot, but they, you know, you, uh, it's just such a shame what's obviously happened this year. But at the end of the day, um, I normally try and get up to it which half a dozen, eight times a year if I can. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. other than that, I don't really get to see a lot at all, to be honest. Obviously, most of us, uh, most of us people that loved watching you and uh, how entertaining you were. Is there, what, is there any riders now when you watch a GP that sort of excite you and entertain you watching them race? Um, to be honest with you, I think there's, you know, there's a lot. You obviously got Schmarschlick is, you know, incredible to watch. But you know, everyone likes watching Doily and and Ty and everyone. But you know, there's a lot of a lot of them Polish riders coming through are, are really good. You know, I mean, Janowski. You know, he's, he's, he's good to watch for a different reason. You know, mm. you watch Smars there, can he'll have you on your edge of your seat, whereas you've got to admire someone like um, Yanofsky about how, how tidy he is and everything. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're all good, aren't they? You know what I mean? They, the difference is now I think there's more more of them are capable and it's probably shown that they're capable of winning a Grand Prix this year, you know. Yeah. Is there any other sports you enjoy watching, Mark, other than obviously the bikes? Um, no, to be honest, it's probably the ne next to Speedway, it's motocross, so um, yeah, I enjoy watching Watch. that. Um, me little, me little boy was riding a little bit of motocross, but um, sadly, obviously, this year there hasn't been any. But then he, he had a stage where he had to move to an 85 and he was too small, so kind of had yeah. to have a year out. But um, mm -hmm. you know, he he does a little bit of mo local motocross and that, and but yeah, it's probably the other sport that I enjoy riding, watching really. 
Do you, do you watch any of the like the Supercross in America and all that sort of? Do you like any of that? Yeah, I love to watch it, but obviously mm. it's on at strange times that I don't get to see. Yeah, it yeah. Anymore, but yeah, yeah, I just watch a lot of it, but yeah, it's incredible. What? I did go and see Anna, Anaheim once live. Which oh, did you? That was yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah that's the first amazing. night they had this, the first night they had a split track. Yeah, yeah. And over there with a friend of mine who makes levers over there. And um Wow. Yeah, that, that was a hell of a night to watch that. It was one of the best. Oh, that was I've good, wasn't it? Yeah, best things I've seen. Amazing. Bubba Bubba Stewart, show as well, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Bubba Stewart, love James yeah, Stewart. Yeah, that night, he was yeah. brilliant. He was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Top rider he was. Um mm -hmm. what have actually what actually have you been doing yourself then, Mark, since the speedway days as um, well? I've got a uh, a garage where there's uh, four of us uh, independently yep. repairing BMW cars. Oh, so, right, okay. Yeah, real busy. So, you know, we do a lot of lot of work, like engine rebuilds and, you know, a lot of in-depth stuff. Um, so, yeah, it keeps us keeps really busy, over busy, to be honest. So, <laughs> can't you enjoy that? So, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Mm. You know, it's like everything. It's not as easy as riding a bike for a living, but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all right. Don't hurt as much, Mark. Don't hurt as that's, much. <laughs> that's right. No, you're right there. <laughs> um, got, got good lads work with me and that so we have we're, we try and have as much fun as we can you know and then um, try and get some work done so it's great yeah we're very lucky nice um all through the years so obviously there was massive british talent in the british league uh with them a lot of them you mentioned that you grew up with and that was it was it ever really competitive between you guys as in like did you always have a good camaraderie or it, did it ever get over competitive between the british lads no i mean it was just the you you know the usual um but I think it's like everything, you know, I think it's like, I think it's a lot of the time you rode with someone in Poland and against someone in Sweden and with someone in England. So it was never really that. I personally, you know, I'm pretty sure 90% of the people I rode, we've never had a problem switching off to be able to be yeah. friends and then do your job on the track. Yeah. And then straight afterwards, you're back friends again. I never had a problem with that. Obviously, injuries, we all know, is part and parcel of the sport, unfortunately, as we know. Was there ever any injuries that you had in, during your career you felt like maybe held you back at certain times that you, know, you could have achieved even more? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the year I broke my arm, I, I ended up mm. as, yeah. you know, um, I, I tried to ride again, but I missed out on a few rounds. And, yeah, I had a few injuries. You know, I've lost the enemy finger at Eastbourne, which I actually ended up losing seven weeks of one season which is a bit annoying just over a finger but which is hard because yeah. i couldn't hold on obviously when you think that well, it's only a finger yeah. when you can't hold on it's no good but um <laughs> yeah I mean, it's, it's all part of the job and you've got to just the first thing you think of is just when you can going to be able to get back on and ride again similar as that someone's obviously mentioned it as well we remember the obviously the, the big accident you had at foxhall uh the, uh, right at the end um was yeah. that yeah. Was that hard to cope with about, obviously, when you've realised that that was, because you pretty much was out for a season and then you decided that yeah. it's too long to... Hmm. Yeah, well, I had problems because um, I was obviously out for a whole season because it happened in March. So yeah. the next year um, I had problems. I'd have further bone grafts and um, I had a pin took out and plates and screws put in. So I had about another five operations off and off. And then being 36, 37... To miss another year and then try and come back, I just had to make the decision that, like we spoke about earlier, you know, if you can't back, come back that rider you were, to try and come back and and what could potentially happen, as we all know well, is if you can't be the same rider, you end up crashing trying. And I just decided that it was just it just wasn't going to be me, so I will knock it on the head, you know. Uh, Adam Winslet just put, did you or can you earn a good living from the sport these days? Again, it goes back to Poland. I think if you can, if you can, if you can get a contract and, and ride 80% um, of the league meetings in Poland, you're going to earn good money. If you don't do that, it's no better than a well-paid job with extra risk, in my opinion. Yeah, it's that... Do you think uh, there's not, obviously, we've mentioned it sort of about the Polish league and everything. I've, I've seen something recently saying something about that Poland are trying to restrict how many other uh, countries you can ride in, apparently. So, obviously, yeah, that's going to that's that's cause happen. a problem. Yeah, that's yeah. going to happen because the likes of Doily in the end, unfortunately, they'll, they'll do contracts over there that are worth such money to them that um, yeah. they'll end up getting told that they can't ride anywhere else, which is a real shame for us. But that's going to happen, I'm afraid. Because they can't, 
they're paying someone like him so much money to ride there. And then if he disappears and rides in Swindon on the Thursday night, no disrespect for less money. And I I am um, commend him as we all do for that. You know, that's that's good of him to be here and ride rides so we get to see him. There'll come a time where they'll just turn around and say, Look, I'm sorry, we can't take that risk. You did the long track as well, didn't you, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Someone's yeah, mentioned the long, the long track. track. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Finish. Yeah, finished fourth in the World Championship one year. That was the best year I had before I ended up having to give it up for Polish Speedway. Does that suit your riding, do you feel? Yeah, it was good. It was a lot like grass track, really, but obviously it was smoother, but it was um, yeah. fast. Yeah, it was real fast. Yeah, it was enjoyable. Uh, Paul Barrett has put, uh, what is Mark's thoughts on the tape issues? Uh, a good start or moving the rolling thing and all that sort of, you know, you can, uh, uh, if yeah, you're anticipating I, now, they don't allow it and all that. Yeah, I mean, I've got to be honest, if you don't touch your tapes, then you've made a good start, and you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, in my opinion, you know, yeah, everyone I gets one now and again. I don't think I've got many, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> like the, Grand, the Grand Prix, <laughs> I've seen a few absolute flyers, and you just think, well, yeah. if he's not touched the tapes... Yeah, I know, don't like that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Shit, that's shit, yeah. Yeah, shit, yeah, it's a shit. Yeah. Uh, someone's put Jack Morgan. Jack Morgan's put. What, there were rumours that Mark was considering riding for Paul years after he retired. Was there any truth in that? I think that might have been a bit of a wind up with me and Matt Ford, to be honest. With you. <laughs> what was it? One night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone caught caught wind of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you too long, Mark, because these guys uh, could go right, on mate. all night. My bedtime, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Get, get your lying ready for the early alarm clock and all that. Yeah, that's right, mate. Yeah, back up. Your daily grind. All right. Yeah, I appreciate the time, Mark. Anyway, top man. Really appreciate that, Mark. Mate, any Great time. to meet no, you. I really enjoyed it. No problem at all. Great. Thanks a lot. Really Thanks. enjoyed Thanks it. Thanks ever so much. Top man, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Take it Bye easy. Mate. Cheers, mate. Bye. Right. That was awesome, people. I think... Uh, Mark had uh, some family in the background there that wanted to get to bed and everything. I think he was in one of the rooms, so I uh, didn't want to keep him too long. Uh, but what a, what a great man he was and what a great rider he was. What an absolute legend he was for British Speedway. Who, guys, I've seen all your comments and everything. Everyone's been making comments. Um, what a rider he was. Um, the entertainment-wise, wow, Mark Laram was the man, wasn't he? Uh, passing from the back, never sort of made his good getaways from the gate, but then obviously uh, it would have been boring, let's say. <laughs> Mr. Mark Laram was an absolute legend. <clears throat> Thanks ever so much. Everyone's put a great interview. Thank you. Nice one. Enjoyed that. That was really enjoyable f for me as well. I really appreciate everyone coming on and asking your questions. A good sort of nearly hour and a half with that man was unbelievable, and I haven't seen anything from Mark uh, for quite many years and i really appreciate mark uh sorting it out i think he uh said he's not into his mod cons uh luckily he got uh one of his kids uh, ipad and he got that going and he showed me that he had sixteen thousand emails that uh he's not even seen so i, th I think that's uh, barney kennett lee brilliant show mark is my hero star thanks ever so much barney you were a great rider as well love the kennett family as well Lots of uh, quality Kennet riders in, over the years. Yourself, Gordon, Edward Kennet, love them guys. And my dad and my uncle's era as well. Uh, been a great watch, thank you. Quality, thanks for that, thank you. Adam Winslet, 100, would be great if Mark had a role in Speedway. Yeah, actually, I was gonna, I, that was one thing I need, I was gonna speak to him about. Thanks a lot, Lee Ashbury. Thanks, Stevens at a wall. Thanks, mate. Thanks for everyone tuning in from all over the world, it seems. Poland. Uh, didn't we have one from New Zealand, someone said, and Australia? <clears throat> nice to see Sean Tacey on as well. I remember him well. He was another good rider. I remember him at Coventry in the Coventry days, coming to Swindon as well. That was cool. I'll just mention quickly as well, I've got while I'm here, I've got the, uh, don't forget people, I've got the competition going in my Facebook group and everything. I've got the 10 times world champion, Mr. Stefan Everts' race shirt. So you can message me for tickets for that, as you can see there. This is the shirt that he won in the Western Beach race when he came over to the UK to do that. And he signed it there on the corner, if you can see there. Oh, where is it? On the wrong side of there. 
there you can see the signature there look on the side amazing he's got his numbers look in 72 of all the grand prix he won and all over the all over the world so that's a really cool piece of memorabilia there it's going to be a killer that that's going out once someone wins it but as you saw the other day with the jeremy mcgrath shirt it was easy as uh, i asked the chap on the actual day that i did the draw i asked him if he wanted a ticket he said yes there was only four left and he had a ticket and won the mcgrath shirt so it was that that easy so get involved people message me for that got some good news for speedway fans that are probably on here now and mark laram <clears throat> excuse me I've got, um, I've agreed now with Mr. John Davis, uh, former Redin, Redin, Swindon Robbins, Kings Lynn, star. Uh, he rode Wimbledon Dons in his early years, I believe. But Mr. John Davis was obviously a quality rider for Great Britain, England, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be a, a really superb interview next Monday night, 7 p.m. UK time. Don't miss that one. Uh, John's not known to uh, mix his words. And uh, my dad, David Ashby, he, uh, he used to tell me some great stories uh, from John Davis back in the day off track. So, uh, yeah, I did speak to him and I was laughing, saying I'm sure we're going to have some good fun. And uh, he was laughing as well. So I'm sure uh, we're going to have some great fun there. And actually, I will share one. Uh, I did do a, an interview of him quite a few years back, 2014, I think it was. And I, I will give you one comment he made. This is quite funny. Um, <clears throat> most of you remember Pat Bliss, the promoter at Reading back then. And his actual words were to me, uh, there was more atmosphere in Pat Bliss's knickers than there was at Eastbourne at the time. So that absolutely <laughs> killed me when he said that. Oh, he's such a funny guy. Great rider there as well. And great, uh, he was a great rider. Yep, Barney, as he said, People used to call him Mavis. I remember as, as a youngster, um, being at Swindon, obviously, followed Dad and my Uncle Martin and all that. Uh, but I remember being a youngster. I swear it was uh, John Davis had a van with a... I don't know if it was Linda Lasardi on the back of the van. But I was quite uh, drawn to that, I remember. Someone's put... Uh, top of me, thank you very much. Steve Schofield. Yes, we've spoke... Met, that's come up a few times now, that name. So we definitely need to get Steve Schofield. And also, I've uh, sent a message through. I've been speaking to his dad, Graham Hurry, quite a bit later recently. And I'm going to be talking to Egon Muller. That'd be a, quite an interesting one. Yes, Stephen Zetterwall. That's right. Martin Ashby. That's my uncle. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hopefully speak to Egon Muller. So I think that'd be an interesting one. A great character, former Speedway World Champion in the 80s and a bit of a long track specialist. Isn't he? I think he uh, does music and all sorts. Uh, yeah, he seems a great character as well. So I think we're going to try and get Egon Muller on. So that'd be interesting. So, yeah, just mentioning the hurry. I met, messaged uh, Paul Hurry. So I'm hoping to get Paul Hurry on as well. And uh, any of you guys that are into the motocross as well, um, this Friday night. So there's nothing on tomorrow. Little night break for the firework night and all that. And then uh, Friday night, I've got three times British motocross champion and uh, GP rider, um, Sean Simpson. So he'll be on Friday night, 7 p.m. UK time. And then uh, this Sunday, I'll have Jamie Dobb, the legend, MX rider, Britain's last world champion of motocross in uh, Britain. It was in 2001, I think, I believe it was, the 125 World Championship, Jamie Dobb. So that would be quality. Uh, Stephen Zetter will put... Martin Ashby versus Tommy Janssen was great to watch. Yes, uh, there was certainly some great days uh, with my Uncle Martin in the 60s and 70s, Stephen. Um, I know Martin held the golden helmet for quite a while. Those match races they used to do. I believe it was at the start of the meeting. Best of three with the other number ones from the other team. I know he held the golden helmet for quite a while. I'd imagine he was sort of um, John Louis, Peter Collins, them sort of guys. Uh, someone's put Egon is a great character you'll need 10 hour show with all his stories <laughs> sounds like it's going to be, uh, be a good one wouldn't it with uh, Egon Muller so that'd be cool uh, and everyone's put loved the interview with Martin Laram really appreciate that everyone what a guy he is amazing to get him on like I said I've not seen any interviews anywhere of Martin Laram for quite a number of years so that's why it was really special to get him on so actually I will make a 
big thank you as well to Tony Marshall, uh, former Team Green legend in the scoreboys. He raised, went on to do one, two, five GPs. I know he works at True Plant, the old Ipswich guys um, that all do the Mr. Nichols and stuff that do the True Plant that sponsor uh, Ipswich Witches, etc. Tony Marshall, he sorted that out for me to get in contact with Martin Laram. So I really appreciate that, Tony, if you're listening or see this. Top man, really appreciate that. But also I need you, Tony. I want to get Tony Marshall on as well. So it's all right giving me uh, some top people to come on, but I want to get you on as well, mate. Uh, so, yeah, any other suggestions people want me to uh, try and chase up? But we've got loads in the offing. Um, I've had uh, a mate of mine who used to race motocross with me, and he did Speedway as well, Simon Walker. He said to me he's managed to get hold of Chris Holder for me. So that's brilliant. I'm going to get to hopefully speak to Chris Holder. I've already spoken to Nicky Pedersen. That's going to hopefully be later this month. I know he's on holiday at the moment. I've seen his social media. Uh, when he gets back, I'm going to contact him and hopefully we can sort that out soon with Nicky Pedersen. So I think that'll be one that everyone would be keen to watch with Nicky Pedersen. So that'd be cool. But yeah, loads loads in the uh, making, let's say. And uh, also, I will say as well, obviously I've got the competition going for the Stefan Everett shirt that we need to sort out. But we have uh, purchased a bike ready for the next bike competition. I won't reveal what it is yet, but it is an absolute absolute peach ain't the word so yeah when we sort this Stefan Everett shirt out which is a absolute classic piece of memorabilia for anyone uh, it's an amazing shirt even the missus that's not into the bikes doesn't know anything about the motocross or the speedway too much she even loves the Stefan Everett shirt <laughs> so yeah that says it all really and uh, yeah so we have got another bike we have purchased the bike and uh, that'll be coming after the Stefan Evert shirt. So everyone keep your eye out for that as well once we've sorted out the Stefan Evert shirt. And trust me, it's a prize that anybody, anybody in motocross would want. It's absolutely beautiful. And it'll be very personalised as well, which makes it even cooler. And I've just had a message on Facebook from Mr. Paul Hurry, which I'm just looking at, sorry, on screen. Uh, and he put, hey, Lee, hope you're well and yet love to. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Paul. Thanks to Graham Hurry as well, who's been putting me in contact with a few people, making a few suggestions, and hopefully get hold of Paul Hurry. So hopefully I'll be able to do Paul Hurry next week as well. So I'm looking at, I've mentioned Jamie Dobb on the Sunday, got John Davis on Monday night, 7 p.m. UK time. I'm hopefully nailing down Paul Hurry for Tuesday, 7 p.m. UK time. So I'll, hopefully I'll be able to sort that time with him when I get off uh, of this interview now. So Hopefully I can sort that out with Paul Hurry as well. I'm sure he'll have some great stories of his grass track and speedway days. Uh, another great British rider. It was entertaining to watch. But yeah, thanks ever so much, people. As I said, please contact me for the Stefan Everett shirt. You can get a ticket. It's £20 for a ticket. Uh, great chance to win a, a, a mad piece of memorabilia. I wish I could. But it's all for you guys. Okay. So. Good night and God bless. Much appreciated, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. What an amazing man, Mr. Mark Laram. Well privileged to uh, speak to that man. What a legend he was for British Speedway. World champion. Very deserved. Especially as he won a Gator as well to win the World Championship in the Grand Prix. Amazing. What a rider he was. Uh, yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll share this with everyone. Um, so if even if you didn't see it live, don't worry. You can tell your friends and family recorded and it'll be on the youtube channel plus i'll share it on the in the facebook group my motocross and speedway memories so if you've not in the group yet my facebook motocross and speedway memories uh come in there and i'll um get you into the facebook group with me that's where all i do like live videos and live little interviews here and there k wagner love your interviews with the great riders i'm hooked now oh brilliant k i really appreciate that glad to hear that tony ricardson maybe someone's put i Tried slipping into his DMs. That's a little bit of a profession of mine. Haunting, or should I say stalking the riders. <laughs> Getting into their DMs. Um, <laughs> pushing my luck, keep asking. Uh, I've definitely tried that with Tony Ricardson, but I don't think he's seen any of him yet. So uh, I will try, but obviously uh, it's been great. There's been a lot of, been getting a lot of contacts. It's been amazing. Everyone's been really helpful. So it's just a case of getting a contact, basically. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, there's been some amazing contacts. So I appreciate all the people that have been helping me get contacts and everything with riders, motocross and speedway all over the world. It's been amazing. So hopefully I'll be able to bring you some more beauties soon. But like I said, uh, night off tomorrow for fireworks night. Hope everyone enjoys that for the British, obviously, the lockdown again. What a nightmare. Uh, uh, try and keep things uh, upbeat and uh, get you some good interviews that we can all enjoy on an evening. Get your tea, get your popcorn, get your beers out and hopefully enjoy some few interviews and let's reminisce from the old memories and what it's all about is the memories. Everyone's got great memories, whether it's from local legends to world stars, everyone's got their memories, haven't they? So it's, it's been, it's been uh, awesome. So hopefully I'm going to bring you some more cool stuff. Next time I'll be on 7 p.m. Friday night with Sean Simpson. Be a cool one. Three-time British champion. Got his own uh, motocross team in the MXGP. So that'll be an interesting one. Scottish legend. That'll be interesting. And then Jamie Dobbs, Sunday night. Uh, our last world champion, British world champion in 2001. So that'll be Mint. And then John Davis, Monday night. And hopefully, just about to confirm with Mr. Hurry, Paul Hurry, for Tuesday night. And then I'll keep you updated with the rest from there on. But I'll be bang on it, people. All right. Thanks ever so much. Good night and God bless. And I will quote my father. Bless him again. I love to say that before I go. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Thank you very much. Ciao, Bella.